Doki. So, yeah, today we're talking about United States holidays and celebrations. What holiday is that? Halloween. Halloween is coming up soon too, eh? Yeah? So, today we're going to go through first federal U.S. holidays, then we're going to move into unique holidays to certain states. Do you have holidays that are only celebrated in certain states in Belarus? No? We have such in America, and so we'll talk about that. And we'll get into additional celebrations, and then we'll compare some Belarusian holidays to American holidays. Some of them are similar, some of them are completely different, but uh, we'll talk about those and then have a little discussion. So, federal U.S. holidays. These are holidays across the entire country that are basically mandated, basically made a law by the federal government for everyone. First one, of course, New Year's. That's the biggest holiday here, is that correct? Yes. Yeah. And you guys give gifts on New Year's? Yes. Yeah. We don't give gifts on New Year's, we just... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's the most... Yeah, you too? <laughs> Everyone does it. It's the most... Uh, most alcohol is consumed of any holiday in America. Uh, it's New Year's Day. And we also do something called New Year's Resolutions. So a lot of people in America at New Year's, they'll say, hey, this year I want to go to the gym once a week. Or they say, oh, I'm going to stop eating meat. Or, oh, I'm going to call my parents you know, every Sunday. And there's a joke that, yeah, New Year's resolutions, they're basically good for January. And then once it's February, they're already out the window. People are no longer going to the gym. People forget to call their family. And, yeah, it's, everyone makes resolutions, New Year's resolutions, and people will say, ah, what's your New Year's resolutions? What do you want to do in this next year better or more of? Uh, do you do something like that? Yes. Yes? Yeah. yes. What's a New Year's resolution that you may have? The same. Mm -hmm. The same? Mm -hmm. Yeah? <laughs> I like your flag, buddy. Where did, where did you get that? Yeah? It's cool. Kruta. So, uh, New York City is the most popular place for the celebration of New Year's in America. And here is Times Square, and there'll be more than a million people in that square. And what they do is they watch the ball drop. There's a ball that's this huge ball in Times Square, and at midnight, it comes down, and it drops. Right at midnight, and go boom. It doesn't blow up, but it, it drops, and then all the fireworks go off. And um, it's one of the most popular viewed shows or viewed events in America in, an enti in the entire year. More than 100 million people will watch it. In America, there's 320 million people. So that's almost one third of the country is watching the Times Square, New York City, a New Year's celebration. In California, it happens for us at 9 p.m. at 21 o'clock because we're three hours behind. And so when we were younger, um, our parents, we would go to a, a friend's house for the New Year's party, and many times we totally cheated and watched the ball fall at nine o'clock, and then we're, we're already home in bed by midnight. It's kind of <laughs> lame, isn't it? <laughs> I would not do that today, but I know when, we were, when I was younger that my parents would do that. Like, oh yeah, everyone celebrated at nine o'clock, and then we all went home by midnight. Uh, basically, it looks like this. This is a, a piece, a clip from So you see those people kissing. There's also a tradition. Do you have that tradition? The first person you see in the new year, you're supposed to kiss. No. The very first person. Yeah? That's also a tradition. I like that one. It's a good one. So that's in, that's the first of January. All right, so now we're just going to basically, whoa, whoa, no, whoa, you see there, Carson Daly. Okay. <laughs> now we're basically going to move through, move through the year. Uh, in the third 
The third Monday of every January is Martin Luther King Day, MLK, or Martin Luther King Jr. Day. Have any of you heard of Martin Luther King? Yeah. Yes? Yeah? Well, who was he? You know? Boston. He was. His dad was also, I believe. Against uh, racism? Exactly. Against racism and the four... And the, and the more rights to black, to black people. Exactly. That's and exactly he was killed by a racist. It's right. He was assassinated in 1968, actually, on his apartment balcony, standing out on his balcony, and he and was I shot. And I heard one fact: what uh, Jimi Hendrix went to when he heard. Yeah. He, he don't. He don't even want to play, but <laughs> but but thanks to the public, but thanks to the public, he plays um, one of the insanely beautiful melodies. Mm -hmm. Definitely. You're the music man. You got all the music yeah. knowledge. I see. <laughs> So exactly like you guys said, he was an activist against uh, a nonviolent activist, civil rights activist for blacks. His whole thing was about, hey, we do not need to return violence to this violence, but rather they did protests of not going to work or not using the buses after the Rosa Parks incident where she did not give up her seat to a white person. And so all of their protests were nonviolent. And the holiday was first celebrated in 1968. However, not all of the states actually accepted the holiday into, until 2000. And a perfect example of this was that in the early 90s, Arizona was set, was planned to host the Super Bowl, the biggest sporting event in America. And the American Football Association, so the, the National Football League, the NFL, they said, hey, if you do not accept this holiday, if you, if you do not vote this holiday in, in your state, we will not come to Arizona for the Super Bowl. And they didn't. They didn't vote it in. So then the Super Bowl moved that year to Los Angeles because they didn't accept this holiday. The next year they did. So that's an example of how, okay, each state gets to choose for itself the laws that they want, but there is a lot of pressure from the federal government and from other states in order to uh, you know, basically conform, to be the same as everyone else. And this is a segment of his famous speech, I Have a Dream. Maybe you've heard part of this before. This is a small segment of it. My poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day down in Alabama with its vicious races, with its governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and nullification, one day right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. And that's in Washington, D.C. It was filled with people. As you can see, this video is from the 60s. It's, the quality represents that. But uh, he's a very important person in American history. And today, it's still an issue, the issue of, uh, of, of blacks and whites in, in many parts of America. So uh, yeah, and February actually becomes the whole Black History Month. And all the students in the school learn about black history in America in the whole month of February. Uh, also in February, we have President's Day. This holiday originated as George Washington's birthday. Who was George Washington? You guys are good. Yes, the first president of America. And it was later combined with the birthday of Abraham Lincoln. Do you know Lincoln? Yes. Yeah, you guys feel good. All right. Lincoln, he wrote the Emancipation Proclamation, basically saying the, the slaves in the South are free. Was Slave movement. and war. Exactly, and it actually, uh, it, it like started that war. It was, it was his, uh, that was in the heart of our whole civil war in America. Yeah, and uh, they basically combined their birthdays to be President's Day in February, third Monday of every February. Next is Memorial Day. Memorial Day takes place, it's the last Monday in May. And on this day, we remember those who died serving America in the military. It originated as Decoration Day after the American Civil War 
1868 was the day when people would go and put flowers on the graves of those who died. And today it encompasses, it includes all soldiers from all wars and, and all times that have been killed in, uh, in the American military. It marks the also unofficial start to summer vacation. Most schools actually get out at the end of May and then they have summer vacation until about August. And th this photo right here is actually, uh, that's from Arlington Cemetery. And this, this is all from Iraq in the last 10, 15 years, if you look closely at that photo. Independence Day. I associate Independence Day with fireworks, even more than New Year's. For me, Independence Day, there's always fireworks. It's a celebration, there's a July 4th, is what, 4th, 4th of July is what we usually say. The 4th of July celebrates the date that 240 years ago that they signed the, um, uh, the Declaration of Independence, basically saying, England, bye-bye, we are our own country. That was this day that John Hancock wrote his big signature on the Declaration of Independence, uh, July 4th, 1776. Today, we celebrate this day with fireworks, like I said, and barbecues. You know barbecues? Yes. This little barbecue, yeah? Barbecue? Yeah. Barbecue? Picnic, barbecue. Barbecues, uh, parades, fireworks, and baseball. It's in the heart of the baseball season, and there's always games on the 4th of July and a great fireworks show afterwards. Baseball plays a big, yes, baseball and football play a big role in our holiday segment, you'll see. Labor Day, it honors the American labor movement and the contributions that workers have made in America. It's the first Monday in September, and it's originated with the whole uh, labor unions and how workers were joining, joining together in the beginning of the 20th century have uh, better rights and better uh, better work conditions so like the five-day work week 40-hour work week no child labor and so forth this celebrates that day and it's the official the unofficial end of summer we talked about how in May was the beginning and this is the first Monday in September so basically last day of eh, unofficial last day of summer you see what we do barbecues yeah burgers and hot dogs Columbus Day. This just was just uh, last week, this week, this week, second Monday in October. And now this picture is kind of conflicting, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. This photo was actually posted by a friend of mine, Simon Villavazo. He's a Native American and he posted that on Facebook uh, last week. And there's a lot of controversy about why we celebrate uh, Christopher Columbus. Do you know who Christopher Columbus was? Yeah, he discovered the Americas, but he actually never put his foot on land that is today America. He was never in America, like the United States, where the United States are today. He was never there. Interesting, huh? He was only further south. So the whole American, you know, Western Hemisphere, he discovered. But uh, he also started slavery, he killed thousands of, of Indians and, and native people, and was, very, uh, was a very ruthless man by many accounts of history that uh, talk about him as, as a person. So a lot of people are not really, yeah, not really happy to celebrate him as a person, as a man, and a survey last year showed that 38% of American adults are not in favor of celebrating Columbus Day. And my friend Simon is definitely one of those. Do you have any holidays that people are like, no, it's not right that we celebrate that? Do you have such controversial holidays? What's that? 17th of November. 17th of November. October. Of October, yeah? October Revolution. Oh, okay. That's like, um, what, four days from now? Yeah. Okay. No, November of November, next month. It's November? Yeah? November. November. Ah, okay. November. Yeah! That's like, was basically... It's not the day, but we do celebrate. But when Russians come here from Russia, they uh -huh. are surprised that uh, here we have a lot of slogans uh, saying that 17th of November is the day of the birth. Aha. Uh -huh. I 
actually, I, I quote that, or I, I show something later, we're gonna see that. Uh, so that was basically like the, uh, the start of the Soviet Union, more or less. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Our Veterans Day comes on November 11th. Does anyone know what November 11th was in history? It was the, the 11th day of the 11th month, the 11th hour, the 11th minute was when the um, uh, agreement was signed, the armistice day, uh, the armistice was signed to end World War I. So World War I ended. It originally was a celebration of the end of World War I. And today, in 1954, it was changed to Veterans Day, where people honor all of those who served, not just in World War I, World War II, but all people who were in the, the military in America at any time, dead or alive, are all honored on this day, on November 11th. And a 2010 survey showed that only 21% of private employers will give this day off to their, to their employees. For all public employers, so people who work for the library, people who work for the government, the high, sc the high school, the university, they all have this day off. But private employers, uh, for private companies, only one out of five people have this day off. And we'll see later about days off for holidays. There's actually no required paid holidays in America. Thanksgiving. You know anything about Thanksgiving? Yes. Yes, it is my favorite. That's right. So, Thanksgiving. It's coming up in a month and a half. It originated in 1621 which was the first year that the pilgrims were in America. These were the first people to really, the first Europeans to really live in what we call today the United States. And they came over in 1620, and the following year they had their first harvest of crops, of food that they grew. And there is documentation of them having a feast, a big meal over three days time with the local Indians. And this was known as the very first Thanksgiving and the food that was eaten there at that day is still what we eat today as a tradition that includes turkey stuffing mashed potatoes with gravy sweet potatoes cranberry sauce sweet corn vegetables and pumpkin pie basically the first Thanksgiving looked like this and there's a lot of negative history with the people with the immigrants from Europe and with the Indians but this is definitely a positive light in a lot of negative history. This, this really did happen. There's multiple accounts of them actually coming together and having a three-day festival together with the Native Americans. And in school, we actually get together in a class and half of us will be dressed up as Indians. I remember this in kindergarten. And half of us will be dressed up as pilgrims with these silly top hats. Yeah. And we have a meal and we, and we eat together like Indians and pilgrims. Yeah. And you see the Indian sitting. We call this Indian style. How you sit like this? Indian style, huh? So that's the first Thanksgiving. Today it looks like this. Just delicious, isn't it? Yeah. Pumpkin pie, big turkey. <coughs> oh, so, I <laughs> uh, see, I'm going to miss this not being in America this year. So we have this big meal around the table for Thanksgiving. This was... This is a good image. This is basically what it looks like. Everyone comes around the table. In my family, we would write up a letter about, about what we were thankful for, and everyone would share that. Thankful for what each member in our family, uh, we, what we had done with them in this year, or what good things had happened to us in this year. And everyone really kind of opens up a little bit and shows emotions, and that's really nice. And there's more food than you can ever eat. Originally, it was a three-day feast. They ate for three days. Today, we cook for three days beforehand. And then, boah, huge meal. And after the meal, it looks pretty much like this. You know, the woman, let's see, the host who cooked the whole meal, she's been cooking for three days, so she's asleep on the table. The um, crazy aunt and the sister-in-law, they're a little bit, you know, tipsy. <laughs> and the guys all go to the couch and watch TV, they watch the American football game. I mean, this is, this is Thanksgiving, yeah? And then the guys fall asleep on the couch too with more food. It's just, it's great, you know? Everyone comes together, lots of food, lots of drink, lots of emotions, 
And then football, relax, sleep, eat more. I like it. I, I love Thanksgiving. It's, <laughs> it's definitely unique to America. Christmas Day. When it's Christmas season, there's always a Santa Claus dressed up in the, in the let's say, in the shopping center or at the mall downtown. And every child always goes and sits on Santa's lap, just like this one. And you can imagine, you're a child, and mom's like, hey, go sit on this weird old guy's lap who I don't know, and he wants to hold me. Yeah, the kid doesn't like it, you know? <laughs> Everyone has a photo of sitting on Santa's lap, like crying, like, mom, no, just like this. I, there's one of me like this that was actually in the newspaper when I was a kid. I couldn't find it for the presentation, but I, I tell you, most people have a photo just like that on Santa's lap. Absolutely. This is what a, uh, the living room would look like in a typical American house. You've got the Christmas tree with presents underneath, the fireplace. This is so traditional, you know, with the stockings. And maybe it'll have like John, Lucy, uh, Elizabeth. Everyone's name would be on the stocking. And then on the night of the 24th, magically, boom, they get filled with, with gifts. And more presents show up underneath the tree. We celebrate Christmas on the 25th. I know that in Europe, it's sometimes celebrated on the 24th. For us, the 24th, we would drive around. We would drive around the city on the 24th and look at Christmas lights. And this is so popular in America that people decorate their homes just like this with all of these lights. Looks, it's, it's a lot, isn't it? It's a lot. And it's not just one house or two houses. It's like the whole neighborhood. Everyone's got lights on their house. If you don't, it's almost like, hmm, they're not in the Christmas spirit, you know? Mm. <laughs> and we would drive around and see all of the houses uh, decorated with lights. And there's actually a map that's printed in the newspaper. This is from my hometown. Chico Tour of Lights. And these are the hot spots. These are the places you must go. These are the must-see houses. So everyone knows, yeah, these are the best houses this year that we need to see for lights. And to do that on Christmas, Christmas Eve, the night, you know, Christmas Eve night, sometimes there's people outside, they're giving out uh, candy canes, the peppermint candy canes, or hot chocolate. It, it's really cool. It, it, it's really cool. And, and the same people get into it each year. They'll go crazy on their houses like that. And it's a, it's a big investment. It's a, it's a lot of lights. It's a lot of money for the electricity. But it's, it's really important for a lot of people in America. It's, it's, it's pretty cool. Then there's Christmas morning. So on the 25th, this is every kid's favorite night, the night of the 24th, waiting for Santa Claus in the morning to come. And we would rush downstairs, wake up super early, like 5 o'clock for kids. That's super early. I bet you don't wake up at 5 o'clock, no? <laughs> super early. And it looks like this, basically. I'll just play. <laughs> Oh, uh, wait. We disconnected the Bluetooth. Hold on a second. This is really good. This kid's, actually, this kid's name is actually David as well. And I, I kind of really associate it with myself because I got a Nintendo 64 when I was his age. Something like this. Basically, Christmas morning, yeah? What the gift is what? What? What the gift is what? Nintendo 64. It was a game console in the late yeah, 90s. It's, it's not popular. It's not popular to East, East, East Europe. Really? You didn't have Nintendo 64? No. Really? Well, because, because the 90s was almost all piracy. Yeah. And Nintendo 64 is a little hard to. That's true, because they had the cartridges. And with the PlayStation or with the Dreamcast, you had the CDs and you could pirate well, those much easier. Well, I, well everyone played on the PlayStation, mm -hmm. so the Belarus, Russia, and post-Soviet country. 
Yeah, that's really interesting. I, I did not know that the Nintendo 64 in the East was not popular, but regarding the piracy, that totally makes sense because it's very difficult to uh, copy one of those cartridges and a CD would have been, DVD would have been much easier. So moving on to holidays unique to certain states. So this would be like just uh, Vitebsky Oblast had a holiday, but not Minsk. That'd be interesting, huh? So Mardi Gras is only celebrated in Louisiana. It's only an official holiday in Louisiana, in New Orleans. Do you know what she's doing and what all these beads are about? <laughs> Does anyone know? There's this tradition that everyone has beads, <laughs> and in order to get be in order to have the beads thrown upon your neck, you have to take off your shirt. So everyone's running around, drinking, taking off their shirts and throwing beads. That's the holiday. Yeah? It's uh, celebrated, like I said, only in New Orleans because they have, they have uh, a French background, which is Catholic. And for the re it's basically like carnival. And the rest of the United States doesn't really celebrate carnival, or we call it Mardi Gras. They don't really celebrate it. Uh, and it's only in New Orleans. And that was the most appropriate photo I could find from the party to show you. In California, though, we have Cesar Chavez Day. And a few other states actually celebrate Cesar Chavez Day as well. He was an immigrant farm worker from Mexico to the United States. And he was a civil rights activist for farm workers. And immigrant farm workers had very poor rights, also very few rights initially, and even up into the 90s. I mean, he fought a lot for them to have rights and for the conditions for farm workers to be better. And in California, as we learned last week, our, the backbone of our economy comes from agriculture. So this is very, very important in California. There's even a stamp made after him. And this has been observed in California since 1995, shortly after Cesar Chavez died. Um, he lived a long life, very happy, yeah, he was, lived a good life. Um, but he was also the founder, the co-founder of the National Farm Workers Association. And we see Cesar Chavez as a, as a very, very important man in Californian history. We also have Cinco de Mayo, and this originated from the Mexican unlikely victory over the French in 1862. But today, it's really just a celebration of Mexican-American culture. And in the streets, like this is in California, there'll be parades, people dress up in traditional Mexican clothing, and it, it, it's beautiful. And they do these dances all through the parades, all through the city. And people who don't have Mexican heritage, we still celebrate by, you know, wearing a sombrero and uh, eating Mexican food, which we love. And I miss a lot. <laughs> really a lot. Um, there's also a lot of this. Uh, a lot of the beer companies from Mexico, like Corona and Dos Equis, they advertise for this holiday a lot, a lot. And uh, yeah, Cinco de Mayo is celebrated across all of, all of California. In California, we also have Harvey Milk Day. He was the first openly gay person to be voted into public office in California. And when Arnold Schwarzenegger was our governor, or governator, do you understand why governator? You know what films he made? Terminator? Terminator 3. Yes. When he was. So we would call him our governator. Instead of governor, the governator. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harvey Milk was, uh, was voted into office in San Francisco. And while he was um, in public office as a politician, he was assassinated. And he was an activist for gay rights in California and for, for America. And in 2009, Arnold Schwarzenegger made this a law that May 22nd will be celebrated in America <coughs> as Harvey Milk Day. Additional celebrations. These are celebrated across all of the United States. Super Bowl Sunday. Has anyone heard of Super Bowl Sunday? Uh -huh. Yes. Super Bowl Sunday is a big one. My, my favorite team actually won this year. So this was awesome. This was a big, big year. The uh, Denver Broncos. My family's... My father was born in Denver, and a lot of my relatives live in Colorado. And so the Denver Broncos actually won this year. This is the most watched thing on TV the whole year. Almost half of the country watches this. 320 million people in, in uh, yeah, more than half. I mean, it's, it's crazy. 
167 people, 167 million people watched this this year. 167 million. Can you imagine how many, how many people that is? It's the most watched TV event in America. Some people watch it for the game. Other people watch it for the commercials, but everybody watches it in the commercials. Why do you think the commercials? Money. Exactly. All these people are watching this event, and so the companies put out their best commercials for the Super Bowl. Like, literally, it's the only time ever where you'll be like, Honey, honey, come! The commercials are coming! Come on, come on! And she's running in from the kitchen with, like, the cooking pads and stuff, but just to see the commercials. Because the very first commercials in the Super Bowl, they're the best ones. And then there's a whole, sh there's a whole like analysts, uh, they, they analyze the, the commercials afterwards, like, oh, these are the best Super Bowl commercials. And it's so expensive to buy a commercial here. 30 seconds is millions and millions of dollars. So, yeah, 167 million people watching just in America. This is an example of a Super Bowl commercial this year. And there's your beautiful baby any day now. Really? You're eating Doritos? He's eating Doritos on my ultrasound. Do you see what I have to do? I know. <laughs> Give me that. There you go. <laughs> So Super Bowl Sunday, it, like I said, it takes place in the last Sunday of January, the first uh, Sunday of February, and uh, it's something that even if you don't like football, everyone, everyone takes part in Super Bowl Sunday. Valentine's Day, I think that's pretty much similar to what you celebrate here. People give cards and flowers and chocolates, boxes of chocolates to those that they love. Yeah. <coughs> when I was in school, um, we would have little, let's say, little bags on our desk. And on Valentine's Day, like the teacher would go around and put Valentine's in everyone's, everyone's bag. Or in junior high, I remember, I, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I got like 12, a dozen roses, and then had them, like individually wrapped them all, and then went and gave them to all the girls that I liked in school, you know? Like, <laughs> it might sound crazy to you, but yeah. Um, but today, it's actually the second most popular holiday for giving cards. Can you imagine what number one is? Most popular holiday for giving cards. This is number two. What would be number one? Yes. Christmas. Christmas is number one. A lot of people write Christmas cards. Fewer do today, a lot do the internet cards, but it's still number one in, in, uh, in America for sending cards. St. Patrick's Day. Do you celebrate that here? No. No? no. no. Wow. Sometimes. Most, most, yes. don't, most don't even know about St. Saint, Saint really? Patrick. St. Patrick's Day has been celebrated in America really since the beginning of the country. The first initial um, immigrants, a lot of them were Irish, and they were discriminated against a lot, actually. There were... Actually, how, how I remember, it's mostly the middle of the, middle of the 19th century. Yeah. A lot came in the middle of the 19th century as well. well uh, even was the, the big was when a lot of Irish guys uh, <clears throat> in their own place, and they and they so hated the British government. What the what the immigrants to America? This is true, and they came to America, and a lot of people didn't like them in America. There are even signs that would say, you know. Um, free, free position, not free position, but a position available to work. Irish need not apply. So if you're Irish, don't even apply for the job. Yeah, they were discriminated a lot so against us. They were discriminated by England and then by other Americans when, they came, now, when they came to British, America. British Irish problem is still, is still relevant. Yeah, absolutely. And after Brexit, it's even more relevant. Yeah. Brexit is the most important Scotland and England. Mm hmm. We today drink green beer. It's real beer. They just put <laughs> dye in it. Uh, but you'll see green beer everywhere. And in school, you have to wear green on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah? Because if you don't, you can do this. 
from pinch people. They're not wearing green. You can't pinch me. I'm wearing green. You got the memo. She knows my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but on St. Patrick's Day, if you're not wearing green, everyone will come and pinch you. Okay, as adults, not so much. But as kids, if you go to school on March 17th and you don't wear green, you better go home. Like, because <laughs> everyone is going to pinch you. All the other kids, they'll pinch you. And you, and you will, will be bored. Yeah. Both from this. Yeah, it will be awful. It will be an awful experience. So, you must wear green on St. Patrick's Day in America. Absolutely. Spring break. When I first came to Europe, a lot of people said, Hey, have you been to spring break? And I was like, oh, spring break? Like, for me, spring break was always a week off that we had from school. That was usually right next to Easter. But I saw that spring break abroad had been basically advertised as something like this. And, and there are places like this in Miami. A lot of college students go to Cancun, Mexico, and have some kind of a beach party like this. But spring break for most people is just, hey, no school, no university for a week, usually close to Easter. Yeah, Like I said, academic tradition of one week off in the early spring from school university. <laughs> there are beach parties and drinking among university students, but most people just know this as Easter vacation. April Fool's Day. Do you celebrate that? Yeah. 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 So this guy here, he went to the office with a box of Krispy Kreme donuts, and phew, there's only broccoli inside. April Fool's. Do you do such things? Yeah, yeah because uh, most hate broccoli. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Most people would rather have a donut. Do you have any good uh, April Fool's pranks that you have pulled? <laughs> huh? Anyone? No? No? Alright. This might be one you can try. <laughs> Easter! A lot of people will go to church on Easter. Uh, we celebrate the, what you guys call like the Catholic Easter. And the Georgian calendar, it's the first Sunday after the Paschal full moon, which is the first full moon after March 21st. And a lot of people will only go to church in the whole year on Easter and Christmas. So a lot of people go to church on, on, on Easter Sunday. But even people who are not religious, a lot of them still celebrate Easter, just like Christmas. Even, even people who are not Christian or religious, or I mean, will still celebrate Christmas. Basically, they still it's, it comes like a family holiday more than a religious holiday in some families, and it's pretty much celebrated across the entire country. We'll see a percentage later. It's like high 90s. Same with Easter, and kids will do an Easter egg hunt. Do you have Easter egg hunts? No. Okay. So basically, the the parents take a bunch of Easter eggs and the Easter bunny goes and lays out a trail. And there'll be like an egg right here, and then an egg right here, and then an egg right here. And you have to follow this trail of eggs that may go through the house, and then outside, around the neighbor's house, and then into the forest, and then there's a basket. And it's called an Easter basket. And the Easter basket will look like this. We'll have a bunch of chocolate, and candies, and maybe gifts, like, new socks and new underwear, you know, parent gifts. Yeah? But these chocolate bunnies are always there. You've always got the chocolate bunnies and they're hollow inside. You can bite off the ears and then even like fill it with milk and, and drink it out. Yeah? <laughs> the chocolate bunnies are always there. Here's a kid searching for his Easter eggs, filling up his, uh, an Easter basket with his eggs. And uh, everyone does an Easter egg hunt as a kid. Everyone does. Also Easter egg coloring. We would always get together and color eggs. Do you color eggs? Yes. Okay. It's really beautiful, actually. Mother's Day. Our Mother's Day is the second Sunday in May. I know yours is another day. Tomorrow. 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 Okay. Well, I, when I researched this, I saw that only Belarus has Mother's Day on this day, from what I saw on, on the source. A lot of European countries have it on the same day in the, in the fall, uh, I think. But... Uh, in, in America, it's in, it's in May, and it was officially adopted in 1908. We got Mother's Day in 1908 after, actually, really many decades of, of, uh, of, of trying to make it a law and make it a holiday. It wasn't accepted until 1908, 
And today it's the third largest holiday for sending cards after Christmas, Valentine's Day, and then Mother's Day. That comes to Father's Day, third Sunday in June. I know you do not have a Father's Day, but you have a Children's Day, which we don't have. But we have a Father's Day. And we saw Mother's Day became a holiday in 1908. Father's Day, 1972. So a lot later, but today, this is basically the most... The best thing you could do on Father's Day is go and watch a baseball game with your dad. It's in the middle of June, the heart of baseball season. This is, this is a big thing. Uh, you go watch baseball on Father's Day. That's like the best father-son thing you could do, is do together. It started actually, it, it was celebrated before 1972. There was a group of, of fathers who were minors who were killed in an accident. And after that, they started celebrating the, uh, Remembering these fathers and then it kind of it grew into being Father's Day across the entire country about 65 years later <coughs> Halloween this is coming up real soon Halloween <clears throat> Originated as a holiday for remembering the dead and today it, There's a lot of pumpkin carving costume parties corn mazes haunted houses trick-or-treating and watching horror films do you know what a corn maze is? No? That's a corn maze. So, like we've heard about California, a lot of agriculture. So we have a lot of corn fields and they will cut out a path, a small pathway in the corn field and it's a maze. You have to try to get to the other end. And there's dead ends, you go the wrong way. It's a lot of fun, actually. But there'll be haunted corn, haunted corn mazes where it's at night and it's spooky and scary. And on some of the dead ends, there'll be a man with a, a scary mask and a chainsaw <laughs> running after you. Yeah, in the corn maze. Yeah, so you know, you don't go that way, go the other way, yeah. The corn mazes, they, people get really creative with these and these are really cool uh, for kids and, and adults, actually. But yeah, it's, kinda, it's neat because it's a big agricultural area and we use that as part of our celebration. Have you ever carved a pumpkin like that? Yeah? Do people do that here too? No. no? Not ah. Because the most good child. Okay. So for kids, trick or treating. I'm sure you've heard of trick or treating. Yeah? That, that could be you, man. At the tea. Tea mojo steal it. Huh? Huh? You go to the door, the kids go to the door, and they say, trick or treat! And Basically, you're supposed to do a trick or give a treat, but you give you better give a treat because everyone gives a treat. Like it's just basically give me candy. Yeah. <laughs> so you see the kids go there with their with their bags or their buckets, or we would take pillows, uh, um, like pillow sacks, like a, a sack or a, uh, the thing you put your pillow in. Yeah. We would take that and fill that up with candy, and walk around the neighborhoods with uh, with uh, our parents and friends. So for kids, it's definitely trick-or-treating. And a lot of kids dress up in like the scary stuff. Like that kid's got a knife through his head. He's a vampire. That's definitely, a, a lot of that stuff is for the kids. Um, for the adults, it's, it's a little bit different. Like in my college town, actually Halloween is one of the, uh, it's one of the craziest party days of the whole year in many college towns. And for, uh, let's just say for the older crowd, it looks something more, Halloween looks something more like this. Oh, we're gonna get to that. Here's trick or treating. My apologies. Here's trick or treating. Did you regular? It's working. Get out of So a lot of a lot of that is is to have the scary aspect to that. And when we were a little bit too old to trick or treat, people would basically trick or treat until maybe sixth grade. And then when you're in middle school, junior high, seventh and eighth grade, you like you have more fun of just like scaring the kids. So then we would stand outside, hiding behind the bushes, 
And the little kids would come up to trick or treat and be like, Wah! and scare the kids. And we had much more fun with that than actually trick or treating. <laughs> and then when you get older and get into college, this is like Halloween downtown. You see anything. You see a bunny, you see a superwoman, you see uh, Dennis Rodman over there. I don't know. You know, you see anything all over the place. And even at the parties, it would look like, it would look like this. This is actually from my hometown. So you see, you saw everything there. You saw Obama, you saw Winnie the Pooh, uh, you saw a Mexican, you saw, I mean, it's, it's really a crazy day. You can dress up in anything. You can be whatever you want. You can be anything. And, and no one's going to say anything about it. It's, it's, it's a very unique holiday. Um, and in college, it's a great time. Absolutely. Black Friday. This comes the day after Thanksgiving. We talked about this earlier, how Black Friday, it's called Black Friday. Many people define it as Black Friday as it's the day that stores will finally make a profit. They'll finally make money for the whole year because so many people go shopping. Let's see, last year, $13.1 billion. Billion. $13.1 billion <laughs> were spent on Black Friday in America. I've got a question. It's yeah. connected with Great Depression in the 91st. It's a good question. Uh, it's actually, it's actually not. There are, I know that there are other references to, to black in, in response to the, the Great Repression. Because uh, I heard great, about uh, Black, black First, Black Fourth Day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was with the Great Depression of a Black Friday. Aber Deutsch, New Mexican. Um, <laughs> but Black Friday comes from uh, a different black. There were two things, uh, two let's say um, <clears throat> explanations for why black. One that I read was because of this uh, going from uh, being in the red to not making money to being in the black of making money. Like in an accounting table, it's red when you're, when you're owing money. And the other one was someone back in like 1970 in the newspaper described as Black Friday because of all the hordes of people going to the stores. And it was really, it was just, it looked black because everyone had their jackets on because it was snowing. It was like in Virginia or something. And that was the first time it was written as Black Friday because of the amount, the mass amount of people going, to, going shopping. It looked like a black swarm. And this guy called it Black Friday. Other than that, but people don't think of that today. Today, everyone says it's the day that people, that the stores make a profit. They go from being in the red to being in the black. And that's why it's Black Friday today. But it's becoming more popular to shop online. A lot of people are sick of going to the stores because it's in some places, I mean, every year we hear usually about really bad things that happen. Like people just swarm the stores and sometimes people are actually killed. Like, like stuff happens like what happened in Amiga in Minsk when the rainstorm, yeah? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that happens, has happened on Black Friday before. And people just don't want to deal with so many people and a lot of the trends are showing more people are shopping, are shopping online mm -hmm. than actually in the store. Here's a report from Black Friday. Uh, uh, yeah, this is what it looks like. It may still be Thursday, but for some stores and shoppers, Black Friday already started. A crowd outside Toys R Us in Times Square when it opened for the holiday crowd just a short time ago. Look at that line. More than 100 million people expected to turn out between now and Sunday, either in stores or online. And ABC's chief business and economics correspondent, Rebecca Jarvis, with the first of them in Chicago tonight. Tonight, across the country, the deals race is officially on. Best Buy, Toys R Us, Macy's, Walmart, Target, and Kmart, all among the retailers officially open for business right now. I'd be slaving in the kitchen if it wasn't for uh, this, uh, this sale. Nearly 60% of Americans, 136 million of us, planning to shop between tonight and Sunday. The number crunchers cracking the shopping code, finding today and tomorrow, Black Friday, are two of the best days of the year for deals on electronics. It's basically the start of the shopping season for Christmas. You start doing your Christmas shopping on the day after Thanksgiving. So, we talked about how much money was spent on, uh, on Black Friday. As a business background, statistic, like money figures and statistics, I like this kind of stuff. So 
Thanksgiving, Christmas to New Year's, $630 billion are spent on this holiday season. If you put those all together, all of this is really gifts for Christmas, really. Uh, Independence Day and back to school. Back to school would be at the beginning of August. And there's always an Independence Day sale on cars. If someone's going to buy a car, they buy it around the 4th of July in the summer. And if you're going to buy a TV or electronics, people always buy it at Christmas. I don't know why that is. Maybe because the weather's bad in the winter and people sit at home and watch TV. And in the summer, the cars look nice and shiny. I don't know. But uh, that, those are definitely number one and number two. And the rest of the holidays basically fall in line after that. People are spending a lot of m- money on their moms, on their mothers, and on their lovers. As you see. Who didn't plan that? Who celebrates these holidays? So we talked about how in America, almost everyone celebrates Christmas, but let's see, 95%, I can tell you, 95% of America is not Christian, even though it's originally a Christian holiday. So everyone basically celebrates Christmas and Halloween and Thanksgiving. And what do you see not on this list? What's the big one? No New Year's in the top five. Can you believe that? So the biggest holiday in Belarus and Russia and a lot of countries over here. New Year's is not in the top. New Year's is actually uh, six, seven, eight, and ten. Anyone know why that might be? Do people not know if it's the end of the year? Or? <laughs> Reason for that is, is that. The Chinese have a different New Year's. We have a lot of Chinese immigrants. So for them, the 31st of December, no big deal. They have their big party a few weeks later. Yeah. So Christmas is the most celebrated holiday. Halloween the next comes the next. I mean, 95% of Americans celebrate Christmas. There's not 95% Christians in America, not even close. So even though it's a Christian holiday from its origin, originally, Today it's celebrated as a family day, even for people who are not religious. uh, Halloween, 94. Thanksgiving, 87%. Valentine's Day, 85%. Mother's Day, 84%. All basically pretty pretty high. Easter as well. Independence Day, uh, Super Bowl Sunday, and, and, and so on. I'm just curious. I see this right now. 76% of the people celebrate Super Bowl Sunday. But it was like 60% watch it. So uh, what are the other 19% doing? You know? Maybe they're cooking. I don't know. Uh, I got a problem with my contact right now. I don't know why. So comparison to uh, Belarusian holidays. Um, in Belarus, I researched that you get 18 days paid vacation a year. Is that true? You get 18 days. Including New Year's and, and, and your Christmas. <laughs> okay. Maybe it was when uh, we had more um, <coughs> Yeah. Well, what I found is that someone who's worked for at least one year in a company in Belarus, that they're guaranteed by a law 18 days total in a year. That's what I found. All right. Uh, in America, in America, it's zero. There's no laws guaranteeing any kind of of paid vacation or paid public holidays. No paid leave in America by law. Some people get it, but not everyone. In Germany, you get 20 paid vacation days a year. Plus, by state it depends, but in Bavaria, you get 13 public holidays. You get 33 days paid leave in a year. (laughs) Um, Yeah, like I said, in America, there's no law requiring a minimum paid vacation or paid public holidays. There's also no maternity leave if you have a kid. So if you saw all these holidays, it's not like we're just partying the whole time. (laughs) Um, Only 77% of private employers offer paid vacation to their employees. So if you do not work for the government, then only three out of four of you would get paid vacation. And the average of that is two weeks. 
10 days. And there are eight public holidays that are pretty much accepted. We went through those at the beginning ones, the, the first holidays. So eight public holidays, and of that only 77% get as well. Eight public holidays and 10 paid vacation days if you have a good job. If you say, oh, I get two weeks holiday a year, two weeks vacation a year, you have a good job in America. So that's two weeks, that's 10 days, five and five, plus eight, we have then the same 18 days as what you have in Belarus. But then again, that's only 77%. Because there's another quarter of people who are not getting these paid holidays at all. And uh, yeah, some employers offer no paid vacation at all. I, I, know, I know that this comes from a different background, but I found this very interesting. That your Independence Day is on the 3rd, and ours is the 4th, both in July. Uh, liberation from the Nazis, separation from England. But uh, that was pretty cool. That, I, was, I was impressed to find that out. This is what I found for Belarusian holidays. If I'm wrong or something, please do tell me. Uh, New Year's, uh, and a comparison to the United States, if you have something that, that matches that. Uh, New Year's on the 1st. The uh, Orthodox Christmas on the 7th. Women's Day on the 8th. Constitution Day on the 15th of March. Yes? It's also the Ides of March. It's when Ju Julius Caesar was stabbed in the back and killed. Beware of the Ides of March. Easter, Catholic. Uh, do you celebrate both Easter's? Or no? Yes? Two Easter's? So this year, the March 27th and May 1st for uh, Orthodox Easter. Also is Labor Day. Your Labor Day is on the 1st of May. Yes. Every year? Every year. Ours is in September. <laughs> and Victory Day. Commemoration Day, May 10th. I guess that's... I guess they, they put that in with Victory Day to be that. I don't That's the source of that. I can take that off for the next presentation. Okay, so Victory, Victory Day on the 9th. Independence Day on the 3rd. We talked a little bit about that. And uh, Mother's Day on the 14th. Yes. A lot of countries have, is it always the 14th? Or is it always the 14th? Because we have a lot that are like, oh, the first Sunday in this month. Okay, always the 14th. Ours is in May. Um, I saw that a lot of countries have different Mother's Day holidays for what, what day it's on, but only Belarus, <coughs> on my source, had it on the 14th of October. A lot of European countries had it together, but only Belarus on the 14th of October. Um, October Revolution Day? Can someone, can someone explain to me what that is? November 7th. Show it to But the end is the end of the time. Can you explain well, to me in English? Yes, please. Before 1917, well, there was uh, uh, so there was no democracy. Then Lenin came, he made a revolution, and uh, all all people became equal, as we said. And uh, this was the beginning of some new democracy. New democracy, new democracy, new democracy. New okay, <laughs> I understand. No politics anymore. So it was the beginning of Lenin. Yeah. Okay, no more money. Okay. Interesting. I think December 25th, the Catholic, like our Christmas, what will you do for Christmas? Yeah? What, what does one do for Christmas in, in Belarus? Eat? Drink? Hmm? But do you have a Christmas tree or no? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Catholic, but Orthodox. Yeah. We have the, uh, okay. one large holiday beginning on December the 25th and ending on the 7th of January. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Well, that's pretty good. That's like more than our two weeks vacation for the whole year in America. So, yeah. Um, God, in Russia, they get a whole two weeks in January. Yeah, that's the same. Yeah. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it never worked over there. <laughs> no. So yeah, that is uh, that's holidays and, and celebrations in America. Any of those? That, any any questions about that? Anything that you found really interesting? Yeah. You, 
we have a lot of civil rights holidays like you saw, like the Martin Luther King Day, the Harvey Milk Day. Um, yeah, it's, I think that's, those are kind of more recent holidays that have been enacted, that have been put into place. And um, yeah, I think it's good that people think on those issues because there's still issues today. There's still issues with discrimination against blacks and gays in America. And it's, it says a lot that the legislation, the, the government puts in holidays to say, hey, these, we are celebrating people who fought for the, the rights of these minorities. So, next week I'm in a conference, but in two weeks we have how to live in Germany like a German. I lived in Germany for four years. And that'll take place here on the 26th of October, just a few days before Halloween. And I hope to see you there. Has anyone here been to Germany or speak German? Can you even hear Deutsch sprechen? Yeah? Ein <laughs> paar? Keine Studenten hier können Deutsch sprechen. No students can speak German here, no? Okay. Presentation will be in English. No worries. Keine Sorgen. Thank you for being here. So, next week, no meeting, two weeks. We'll see you in two weeks, okay? Spasil Boschoy.